only reason that white people in the United States or anywhere we are in Europe, in Africa, in Australia, in Israel, wherever we are, we are the colonizers. We are the colonizers. I love when I see videos where white people are calling out their, their people for the things they are doing to the black people, for the things they did to Africans, and sometimes accepting that uh, they were the problems. But I don't like where black people, we keep on condemning white people. What do we need to do? We find ways for us to take what is ours, you know? It's not every day we'll be complaining. We complain this, complain that, and we are still uh, stagnant on a one point. We don't even make steps. We don't even try to stretch our hands. We don't even try to put a government that we love, you know, that can do something for us. So whenever we put a government that fail us, we condemn white people. And somehow, yes, they have done some things, some things to us that it has it will take so long for things to change, but we need to wake up as Africans and black people. Now, in this video, I'm going to react on a video for this uh lady who spoke out, who called out uh, the harass and told them direct to their face what they need to do. Let's watch this video and then we go react on it. The only reason that white people in the United States or anywhere we are in Europe, in Africa, in Australia, in Israel, wherever we are, we are the colonizers. We are the colonizers and we live off the expense of the assault, Europe's assault on Africa, the kidnapping of African human beings, the trafficking, the, all of these things that we hear today. This is where it came from. Yeah. Hundreds of years of assaulting and stealing everything that African people and Africa as a continent had and putting it into the hands of white people. And so this is why as the chairman has said, the true class struggle, the true working class in the world is the African and colonized working class, yes. not white people, because all white people, and you know this is true, you and I know this is true by just living our lives and seeing it, all white people sit on the pedestal on the backs of African and indigenous people. And, you know, the, the statistics are that even poor white people have an easier ability in a crisis to raise $3,000 in an emergency than middle class African people do yep. because we live in social wealth. Yeah. I know I don't understand your experience. Yes, ma'am. Because I have never had to live it. Come on now. I can sympathize. Yeah. And I can recognize Talk, things sir. are Talk. wrong. That's For, right. sure. here. For instance, uh -huh. if a black man or woman should never be afraid for their life, for getting pulled over, for speeding. Come on, man. But I have never lived in that fear. Come on, man. Come on. No black man or woman should ever be reluctant to walk outside for fear of racial profiling. Come on, man. But I have never been racially profiled. That's right. Come on, man. No black man or woman should ever expect to go to jail in their lifetime because of the color of their skin. Come on, man. But I have never lived in that expectancy. That's good. That's good. That's good. And this is why I don't believe in the phrase I don't see color. That's right. <laughs> One, to say you don't see color is a lie. Damn. Damn. We're different. Damn. We can all see that. But two, and way more importantly, to deny the differences in our skin is to deny the differences in our privilege. Yeah. 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 I'm going to say that again because I think it's worth repeating. Yeah. To deny the differences in our skin uh -huh. is to deny the differences in our privilege. Yeah. To deny the differences in our color is to promote ignorance. Huh? Ignorance is Ign the reason that systemic racism and oppression is allowed to exist in this country. I'm gonna talk on about three things. One of those is change, the other is ignorance, and one is discomfort. I'll get there. <laughs> Go ahead. Take your time. Broadly speaking, why am I here? Because I want change. Mm -hmm. But let me speak on that for a second. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people want change. Yes. I think a lot of people say they want change, but let me clarify. I think a lot of white people think they want change. Come on. But here's the thing about that. In order for there to be a true and genuine change, 
for you, for the black community, for people of color, there has to be an equal and requited amount of change for white privilege. Yes, right. And yes. that is something that white people don't want to think about. No. They don't want to admit that. Mm. White people don't want to acknowledge the head start we have in life that just is, for being born right. this color. Yeah, exactly. That right is that's willful that's ignorance. Put it on front line. Willful ignorance is what allows oppression to continue in this country. Mm. I think one of the biggest things that allows ignorance to continue yeah. is our education system. There it is, baby! <laughs> Damn. Damn. Our education system. I can recognize when something is wrong. And that is wrong. Yes, Why? Because when you tell that history, the history that excludes black history and black culture and the black experience, you allow white people to think that nothing is wrong. And when that happens, you allow white people to think, well, it was bad back then. But it's not bad now. Hell no! That's right. It's bad now. In fact, some might say it's worse. Because this is systemic oppression. This is institutional oppression. This is oppression that is not overt, but it is just as powerful, and we are able to hide it. And this is not my time to have my voice here heard, but I will use my voice for you. I promise. Welcome back. As we know all, she has said, uh, whatever she has said, I love it. And we want to review on some things white people or white countries most of them are being uh, grown on the back of a black person most of the white countries we see like france united states most of them are built by black people and uh we build it by sweat and blood hard labor you know call it so this lady whatever she's saying it's true and white people needs to understand that Without black people, maybe they could not be there. Maybe their country could not be as good as they think they are better than Africa, you know? So I find it very constructive, the message. But we want to review on something, several countries that were built by black people. That's what we are going to do so that we can align with the message of this young lady. And uh, black people have played fundamental roles in the economies, societies, and development of these countries. For example, country number one is United States. United States of America. Okay? United States was uh, heavily built on the forced labor of enslaved Africans. Underlined forced labor of enslaved Africans, especially in the southern state. Enslaved black people were essential to the production of cash crops like tobacco, rice, indigo and cotton which fueled the u.s economy so cotton in, in particular became the backbone of the america economy which exports driving industrial growth in both the u.s and europe so enslaved enslaved people from africa they worked in a very hard condition to build the economy of the united states of america Infrastructure and cultural too. Enslaved people contributed a lot, contributed a lot in the construction of significant in infrastructure, including buildings, roads, and railroads. Black Americans have also contributed immensely to cultural and intellectual development of the country, from music, you name the, all the music you want to name from black people, jazz, hip-hop, blues, name it, uh, to literature, science, and civil rights. So, here we have seen that black people have played part in infrastructure and cultural uh, contribution in the United States of America. Um, another thing is that black Americans continue to shape the country through their roles in labor, politics, and culture, despite facing system racism. System racism is what is eating us up, but uh, black people are continuing to shape the culture of the USA, music culture, politics, labor, most of them work so hard to build the country of United States of America. Other white people or white countries that have benefited from black people, it's Brazil. Brazil received more enslaved Africans than any other countries. If you don't know, Brazil received more enslaved Africans more than any other countries. Millions of them were brought there to work on sugarcane plantation, gold mines, and coffee production. This labor was crucial to the Brazilian economy during the colonial period and beyond. 
that's why we see a lot of black people in brazil yeah you can see even their footballers we have brazil's black even sometimes back i was thinking brazil was a black country back way back when i was i had not paid my school fees another country is, is caribbean nations like uh, jamaica haiti cuba Caribbean is evident. Caribbean is evident. Jamaica, Haiti, where black people has, have shaped the country of uh, those countries in Caribbean. Other countries that are being shaped by black people is United Kingdom, okay? The UK, particularly during the uh, British Empire, they benefited from the, trans, uh, from the slave trade. We call it transatlantic slave trade and the labor of en enslaved Africans in the colonies. Cities like Liverpool, Bristol and London grew widely from the profits of slave trade and the goods produced by enslaved labor, enslaved labor such as sugar, tobacco, and cotton. After abolishment of uh, slavery, many blacks from Caribbean, Africa, and other parts of empire contributed to rebuilding and development of UK, especially after World War II. Well, during World War II, labor was, uh, there was shortage of uh, shortage of labor and black people were there to help to rebuild the country of UK. Another country that has been grown by Africans or black people is France. African Caribbean labor also contributed to France's economic development, particularly in the post-colonial period. Uh, workers from former colonies were instrumental in rebuilding France after both world wars and in developing its infrastructure and industries. Other countries like Canada, Portugal, Spain, name it. Name all of those countries that have benefited from black people, benefited from Africans. And that's why uh, when this white uh, lady was saying that, you know, we need to respect these uh, black people because we have done a lot of them, a lot to them. We are the colonizers, but we are living because of them. We are living because of their back they have sweat we have sweat blood water sand name them for these white people to have their good economy good infrastructure everything is because of the sweat of a black person uh, now most africans are have engaged to these countries in labor culture, economies, and, uh, you know, resistance and political change. For example, enslaved Africans and their descendants provided the labor to build much of infrastructure and wealth in these countries, okay? Particularly in uh, plantations, mining, and constructions. In culture, Africans have influenced culture, more soft music like jazz, reggae, samba, rumba. All of it have African roots. Economics, the weight generated from the labor of enslaved people in colonies and the trade in enslaved Africans helped fund industrialization and development of banking, shipping, and other industries in the Europe and America. So from this, what I've said, you can see that Africans have done a lot for these countries. But still, the white people are the colonizers. So... I love when this lady has called out her race, has said what needs to be said. But all in all, white people have to realize that without black people, we could not have a nation like London. We could not have a nation like France, United States, Brazil, Portugal. All these countries have been built from the back of black people. So, all say it like that. I just want you to comment down there what you think. Because I know you have a lot to say. Unapologetic. Okay? Just say what you have to say in the comment section about the video. About what the lady has said. And uh, we love you. Okay? I am the Kenyan Beast and we are doing it the African way every day, every time. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.